I need a three. I need a two. I need a one. Seventh, 2020. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me carry. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number uh, uh, 557. And uh, guess what? Um, surprise, surprise. We have Tony back again. Hello. Uh, for the f- third month in a row, we, we're, we're, we're talking about gear. I'm not even sure why the K is on, on the, the, the thing anymore, but, you know, we'll just stick with it. Keep it in the Because it's a part of kink. It's not, you know, exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. This is the most shows we've had on a t- kink topic. Uh, well, don't don't well. challenge. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> we could we could we could go on to other you know get part twos and threes and fours and fives on certain topics we've already discussed. Yeah, if that's what you would like, dear. Um, dear. <laughs> I mean, names. <laughs> it's not <laughs> that hard, <laughs> Gary. Anyways, moving on. So what are we talking about today when it comes to gear? Since I really don't have any. <laughs> since you don't have any gear? Is that really where, where you're going with that? I have t-shirts. But... Well, that brings up an interesting t- point. Before we jump in, Tony, would t-shirts be considered gear at all? Eh, it depends. I mean, tank tops could be. Okay. You could technically have a T-shirt for a softball team. You could. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was going to say you, you could, don't have like, mosquitoes or swim trunks or. Uh, I mean, there's there's rugby shirts. There's, um, I mean, hell, you can even shorts. do like, yeah, rugby shorts. You can do tennis polos and like, you know. It's it's, it's a very interesting, wonderful. Are you turning blending world? What? By what? Golfers. Golfers. No. I so mean, some of the golf attire has some interesting parts to it. Yeah. So like golf pants, for example. Yeah, golf pants, for example, are usually very thin, so they don't tend to hide anything. Ooh, lots of VPL going on, huh? The VPL. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, um, don't tend to. Uh, kind of like the feel of Under Armour. Mm. Hold on, hold on. Pause. Reverse it. What the hell is VPL? <laughs> Visible. <laughs> penis. Line. Oh, okay. So in like like a so for example, it, it wasn't. I'm sorry, it wasn't wasn't inherent to me. I knew it probably had something to do with the penis, but I couldn't figure out what it was being. For those of us that are perverts on the the interwebs, and we may like and appreciate pictures of men as the seasons change, uh, sweatpants sometimes have mm-hmm. a tendency to have VPL. Running yeah. shorts, basketball, basketball shorts, basketball yeah, gym yes. shorts. Yes. Like yeah. if David and I were playing twenty five thousand dollar pyramid right now. I would be like sweatpants, <laughs> gym shorts, speedos, wrestling singlets, things that are tight, things that show off the dick. <laughs> <laughs> now, just gonna point out one thing, by the way, VPL yes. isn't necessarily penis. Oh, also oh, true. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it, it's 
originally, I think a lot of the terminology was for panty, meaning underwear. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, you could have it either for men or women. <laughs> mm-hmm. True, true, oh. true. Chuck I don't know. Yeah, I thought you were talking about Moose Knuckle, but we won't get into that. Yeah, no. Chuck points oh. out in the live chat, I mean, Scout Shorts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Scouting Shorts. And then, Coach yeah. Shorts. Coach and Shorts. Yeah. So yes, Jeff, but by the way, Jeff, yes, Moose Knuckle is technically a VPL. So seeing the cock and balls like the Moose Knuckle, as I like make the Moose Knuckle, I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> knuckle, bro, bro. And nice. so, yeah. Yeah, anyway, the show. Let's get to the show. <laughs> what are we talking about? Let's, let's do it. Well, so... We're returning to talk about gear. If you have not listened to and or watched the previous episodes, I highly suggest you go check out CAL 549, where we talked about general terminology, kinds, types, categories. 553, the most recent one, part two, we talked about owning and usage, intent, storage, cleaning, safety, um, purchasing, usage. Um, yeah. And uh, the stuff that we're going to get into, how to build your inventory, where to locate. Yeah. Good stuff. So mm -hmm. from where we were at before the continue one, um, Tony, we were talking about um, steps to consider purchasing or using. And I think you uh, like in your notes and stuff, it said about um, once you know what you're planning to do with it, that can guide your decisions on acquiring. Yeah. In particular, like, especially if I'll just pick baseball, for example, Let's say you want to get baseball gear. Uh, if you determine, like, hey, you want to get down to an individual player, now you're getting very specific. You're going to have to really hunt to find that. Uh, you also may go on levels of authentic authenticity. So you may want an actual jersey that player wear wore. That's going to be a mm. lot harder to find than having oh, yeah. one that has iron-on letters. Um, likewise, if you're not picky and you don't care, you can find something that is similar. Um, and depending on how far deep down that rabbit hole you go, we'll determine where you get it. Uh, so like a cheap location F for baseball gear is like goodwill type of thing. FYI, baseball shorts or baseball pants, very VPL. If it wasn't for the dock straps. Sometimes, I mean, I I've seen you Tony in some baseball <laughs> pants and, they they don't they they don't leave much to the imagination. Well, it I depends believe. on which, which set. <laughs> some, sets where I, I, some sets I have the cup on, and sometimes I don't. I forget which one. It, what, I uh, don't anyway. think it matters. <laughs> I mean, I'm not true. I mean, it, it, it matters <laughs> to some degree, but it doesn't matter mm -hmm. that much. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy seeing the cup too sometimes because that that's a little like kind of fun thing that kind of obvious exaggeration yeah exaggeration thank you <laughs> like there's yeah. an obvious exaggeration there it's and, kind of... and for me i like the idea of what's hidden underneath yeah exactly it's like the toy surprise yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes gary um okay but i do have a no, you prefer just, the previews? I'm just gonna say it. I got. I gotta say this. I'm sorry. A jock strap is not a cracker jack box. <laughs> why I not? mean, why not? You have to dig around in there to get your your surprise. I mean, you 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 might think you know what's in there, but you might be wrong. And likewise, it might not be a cracker jack box. You could go by the cheap stuff, and it doesn't hide anything. <laughs> All right, now that's just that's just a wet, 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 wet kind of sound. <laughs> My mama couldn't afford Cracker Jack, so we bought the generic. Yeah. That. Anyway, but no, I mean, like, yeah, I was gonna like I knew to kind of like get serious or back to, back on topic, as it were. Like I I've I recall like one of the 
weird fun things for me when I was a kid. Because I wasn't I wasn't athletic, just like point play period. Like, no, not very much. But certain things for some reasons my mom would have to get at like the sporting goods store. And I don't remember, like, in my head, I don't remember what it was. Like, it may have been my brothers wanting, like, baseball caps, like, um, our basketball sports teams, like, caps. But I remember going there every day, well, not every day, but every once in a while. And I was a little surprised just by how, how, one, how many brands there are, and two, how much price difference there was. Like, very surprised sometimes. Okay, and, and you you can get into uh, like when you get into uniforms. I'll go back to baseball as the example. Um, there are cheap brands, your bike brands, for example. That's where your coach's shorts were the cheap ones. Um, to now you have Under Armour, Reebok, mm-hmm. companies like that that are the premium much brands. more pricey. Mm. Different style, but uh, a lot of times uh, that gets into like if you're emulating a team, for example. A lot of teams will have Under Armour because they get sponsored. So if you want exactly their gear, you have to buy that gear. Mm, yeah. One team will have have Nike jerseys. One team will have Adidas jerseys just because yep. Adidas sponsored one team, Nike the other. Mm. Yeah, if you get into the big leagues, I literally the big leagues, um, usually they get a sponsor and they don't have different yeah, sponsors. Really. I, I yeah, that's actually probably more like along the lines of golfers, because you'll see them wearing the 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 company's hat. Mm-hmm. Their hat will be either Adidas or Nike or whatever. Mm-hmm. Brand. And that actually reminds me, um, you were talking about going to the the sporting gear store every once in a while, probably for tennis shoes. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh god, usually that was where you got shoes from. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the memory it just clicked. The memory just clicked. That's exactly what we were doing. I remember that it, way too it, well. It, it, yeah, it didn't make sense to me why we would be going there, and then I realized, oh well, that's why now. Because shoes for school, going yeah. back to school, shopping, that thing. Yep. And likewise, if you're going to buy stuff, um, going back to that topic, uh, it depends on where you are. Also, so like I went to college in Iowa. Iowa is a huge wrestling state. So you could go to a sporting gear store and they would have wrestling singlets you could just buy off the shelf. Oh. Here in Missouri, not so much. It might if a certain time of year, but it's not going to be there twenty four seven. Um so likewise if you're in a state that loves hockey, you might be able to get that gear, but if you're in a state that doesn't play hockey typically, you're probably not gonna see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why mm-hmm. online is your friend nowadays. Oh, yeah. You can get a lot of stuff online. The thing to watch out for online is sizes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's that's really what I was going to say. To guess. And that's where usually yeah. if you're going to get it online, I'd say buy something used first. So if you're going to go for that higher end thing, go on eBay mm-hmm. and find just a pair of Under Armour that if, if Under Armour is what you're going to eventually get, just find a cheap pair first. Make sure it's the right size. And then when you spend the $50 on a new pair, you're not yeah. wasting it. Mm-hmm. Ask me that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the biggest things. So I went to, um, uh, it's actually a link that he provided for wrestling singlets at one point um, some time ago. And I actually, for my personal, like, I use singlets when I do pup play. Like, mm-hmm. it's they're comfortable, they're easy to wear, you slip them on, you can slip them off, whatever. Um, but... I'm I'm also cheap. I'll just own that, right? Point blank. <laughs> so I went to there like, oh, let's see what's on sale. And I found some a, a couple of brands that were had my size. And I was like, oh, let's just buy like the inexpensive one. Who cares? Like, you know, necessarily color. But like, let's just like you said, like, let's just see. Well, I <laughs> we can get into that in a minute. But um, but uh, let's just see how they fit and i again i thought like the two three x would be an appropriate size and i put it on and was sadly mistaken like (laughs) i could not like i 
could yeah it was it was it was a two it was a two i think and, and i was like trying to get it on and it, it couldn't get it over the shoulders it, right <laughs> nope couldn't get it over the shoulders and i i actually i did eventually get it over the shoulders but it felt like that like it was reaching like pulling my shoulder blades down so You're i was like no nope, that's not to gonna the fit limit to, to get on your shoulders <laughs> Yes, yes. I'm now, used to think, like trying to like. Go ahead. I was gonna say on that. It, there's originally when you first get them, they will be tight. Usually not that True. tight. <laughs> yeah, but they I will mean, be that tight. Was my... They will loosen up. Yeah, I do know that. Like I, I figured this was not. This was not a like. Oh, it'll loosen up and I'll be fine. This was a like. You're you can't move. You might be able to breathe, but you might not be able to move. <laughs> Yeah. And considering and it also, what I was going to be using. Well, and it also depends on the fabric that you got. If it was a Lycra one, you probably have a little bit more stretch. If it was a polyester mm-hmm. one, you're going to wedgie yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to do it while you were drinking there. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I but, caught it. Yeah, no. Uh, it depends on the fabric. It depends on the company, especially with like mm-hmm. singlets. You always want to go higher on those. Um so if you think you're a two, go for a three, um, mm-hmm. mainly because the lycra will stretch it back down. Yeah. Cool. Seas. All right. Especially if you get into like the the football gear stuff, that's another one that I would definitely watch out for when you order online, because uh, in football gear, like football pants, for example, they'll have it in large, extra large, two XL, three XL, four XL, but you'll also get waist sizes which don't match actual waist size. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So you can pick up a pair of 46 football pants that are not a size 46 waist. Mm. It's not the same thing. Interesting. Um, so yeah. And, and you'll find measuring? out the hard way. Um, it, I believe it has to do with the belt size. So mm. You know how your which belt is, is over. More confounding. Yeah. yeah. And so usually there, I would say on football sizes, if you're going by numbers, go like four over what you need because you can always uh-huh. find ways to either shrink it or likewise, if you're wearing pads, you need to go over anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Same with football jerseys. If you're going to wear pads, definitely go up a couple dozen sizes because <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you're never going to fit them underneath if you get a size 42 shirt. Or jersey, it's not going to go over a pair of pads for a linebacker. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I mean, it may, makes sense. You got to take all of the outfit into account, not just what most of us probably yeah. think of as like the the you know the lay person you know thing that we see. Yeah. yeah. And likewise, yeah. if you're getting like, into, yeah. oh, go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying, it's like, it's similar to like, like kilts and such, you know, depending on where you actually wear them, or you, it's usually not the same as your pants size, because your pants, your like jeans and what have you, you've probably worn a long time, and they've stretched and given way and, you know, what have you, whereas, depending on how you wear your kilt, if it's like a traditional kilt or a non-traditional kilt, like a, um, a modern kilt, you might wear it at your waist but you might wear it at your hips and you have to kind of figure out where exactly you want to wear it and measure there as opposed to trying to guess mm-hmm. yeah and it also depends on the type each type of uniform has variations on it so like the wrestling singlets you get the kind that are cut off at the leg sometimes you'll get uh like right at the for lack of a better word the ball level uh <laughs> Um, you'll have some that go halfway down the leg. You'll have others that go all the way down to the knee. Um, you'll have some that are, uh, college style, which, uh, they usually have, uh, sides more open or closed. Uh, you could have it where it comes into a smaller back and then splits at the shoulders, or you could have the straps that go all the way down. Um, a lot of the fetish, uh, singlets, for example, go way down. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's not the kind you're going to actually find in a college, but <laughs> they're fun to wear it like Folsom. <laughs> yeah. You mean I'm not yeah. going to like see 
Borat style, you know, cock signals. Not. <laughs> not the Olympics. I mean, <laughs> no, not at I the Olympics. Not. No. Yeah, that's disappointing. Uh, slingshots are not a great thing to be uh, <laughs> wrestling in. around. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, it's <laughs> it's you know, it's just enough decency coverage, but plenty of skin you know, to skin contact. So. Okay, man. I don't think that's what they're going for. <laughs> in in those that cases, like, you might as well well go Grecker Warman. Well, yep. that's my whole point. Is like that's the that's the issue of that it it, it meets the decency standard that you um, know full nude for Grecker Warman. Right. Why am I picturing that they'll be having a, a little fig leaf over their their crotch, but then they have the big ear <laughs> coverage? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think they had either in, in those days. Talking about no. ancient Roman times. But like, likewise, if you could do baseball, you could have uh, knickers, which will cut off at your knee. Mm-hmm. That's the kind that you see a lot of like catchers wear. And then you'll have the long all the way down to the leg. You'll have sometimes that they gather at the leg. Sometimes they're loose. All of it depends on what you want to get. Right. Mm-hmm. So in terms of like, uh, you know, starting to purchase, I think there's a good distinction to know that there's a, a range of prices and like take your budget into consideration. But also, like, I think we've discussed this previously about length, like longevity, like how long the object is expected to last. There's a difference between kind of a costume effect of items versus legitimate like things that you're going to use in and out repeatedly, possibly decades. Yeah. And a lot of it also varies on like what you're buying it for. If you're buying a particular player's uniform, you're probably not going to be wearing that every time. You'll probably pull it out once in a great while and that'll be it. If you're doing a throwaway uniform, it might be something that you want to get ripped, that you might mm-hmm. want to have a, a scene where it gets destroyed. So, mm-hmm. Wait, did you say scene or yes. seam? Seen. Well, usually it's at the scene, <laughs> but yes. Just want to make sure I was following that correctly. Yes. I, I have lost many a baseball and football uniform to a scene. <laughs> like, was that planned? Usually. Okay. <laughs> Just because I'll, I'll say right now, if you cut up my uh, Under Armour, I will probably not be happy. Oh God! Unless it's that great of sex, then I probably won't care. But well, I, w- I was just gonna say, <laughs> hold up. There, if, there's exceptions if, to the rules. Yes. Like if the seat leads to like one of the most earth-shattering orgasms, that I think you might reconsider that. Like, yeah. hmm, maybe. But, like, shit, <laughs> uh, David, you're like, mm, I don't know. Like, fuck, our rubber is expensive. Like, fuck, I mean, I'm just being, I'm being honest here like look if it, i found if it's, on if it's armor something... that i enjoyed wearing that i had finally found that fit me and some i mean it whoever like if we've been together forever and it gets ripped or are broke or damaged and i can't wear it anymore i might have a problem and i don't care how fucking great the sex is i might still have a problem because like i said under armor is, is pricey it ain't like oh let, oh let me just rip this like t-shirt that you've been wearing for like years. This is right. No. The, 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 <laughs> this is one of those things about the price point is if if you're expecting some you know great great sex and it might mean some literal tear off of clothing. Make sure you're attending this scene scene with. Something that's not very pricey. Yeah. And then also realize that there may be collateral damage. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, the last time I had a football uniform get destroyed, it unfortunately also took out the jock strap that I had literally just bought an hour prior. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. And Hopefully they felt really bad. But... I was just going to say, was the Dom aware of this? Uh, at the sort of kind of um 
didn't realize how that how it had been damaged at the time until afterwards. <laughs> then felt really bad. I was fine. So with it. in the in the throes of passion, things happened. Uh, when when were, the, uh, the seam was cut, <laughs> strategically yeah. aimed, the aim was not quite as good as it should have been and caught one of the straps. Oh. Ah. And it was fairly dark. There wasn't a whole lot of light, so it got missed at the time. Uh, yeah, so I will just say this. <laughs> this is a total tangent. If you're going to do scenes... Lighting's important, kids. Uh, scenes are theatricality, whether we want to admit it or not. I have been a witness to some scenes in not the best lighting. Um, and the first time it was really brought to my attention was the fact that the Dom who was doing impact play um, had broke the skin, but did not mm. know that initially. And, you know, the sub was completely okay with it, was really asking for it, like, so when it ended, uh, the dom like was not happy about the fact that it happened and to the degree that it went, um, you know, and apologized. And so I was like, I'm perfectly fine with it. And the dom's like, well, I'm not perfectly fine with it. Like, I'm really bothered by yeah. the fact that this wasn't a part of the agreement and we should have we should have yeah. done better. And I knew better. And, it, you know, mm. and I was like, yeah. OK, like, you know, because I was new. I had never sat in, didn't know anything. So that was, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And that might have added so, the pressure too. Like that might have been part of why they were like upset because they were like, you know, there's a guest here who is mm -mm. trying to learn well, something. I don't, this is not the proper way. I mean, I'll, I mean, I won't speak on the, the Don's behalf, but I will. I think sometimes if you negotiate something, like there's a contract, you know, involved. And yes, there are sometimes things that go wrong. But things like that that go wrong are things that need to be, should be addressed because they have potential hazards in, right. you know, potential hazards, you know. So I think that's maybe why he was more upset because mm -hmm. um, a lot of things will now have to happen because things that he used, gear he has used, floggers, whatever impact play he was doing, any of those things will have to be cleaned. Um, if they can't be cleaned, you know, or sanitized, you know, those kind of, that's kind of what's going to have to happen. You're going to have to, you know, check on the person and the wounds or whatever and determine how bad they are, which may need to, or may need to be addressed by proper medical yeah. by mm -hmm. authorities. So, yeah. Right. So, sorry. Again, tangent, back, oh. gear, purchasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and, you know, and as we were saying, you know, it's about, you know, what is the intended use? Material can be really important. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Tony and your notes, you know, dude kind of made a reference to about like the differences in rubber. Um, really good quality rubber can be more expensive. It, it, it depends. I mean, but I know that's why I was like, question yeah. mark, you know. Um, some people really like cheap rubber because it is um, they they recognize that it isn't going to last forever, so therefore they're okay with it being the cheap leather or cheap rubber rather, because they can use it for a water sports scene, for example. And oh darn, it got destroyed! It's not the end of the world, so <laughs> that may their interest in that portion, for example, may lead them towards the cheaper end. Um, if, for example, they're very much on the super shiny uh, rubber look, they're probably going to go for something a little bit tighter, therefore probably a little bit thicker, more form-fitting. That, they're going to be really upset if it gets destroyed, usually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. It all kind of varies. And then you can get into like the whole neoprene. Uh, that one can vary greatly uh, if you're into wetsuits. For example, mm -hmm. you, you, you're probably not going to get a cheap one. You're probably going to go for something nicer. But it, it varies on what your interests are. There are so many options yeah. on everything. <laughs> yeah. And uh, usually likewise, with, the more expensive stuff will require more care, right? Uh, yes and no. Um, so, like, if you buy the cheap rubber, you probably have to treat it nicer to have it last longer. 
because it's not yeah. as durable. Mm, that's true. Um, but at the same time, you probably don't care as much, so <clears throat> it, it'll get treated worse because you don't have <laughs> as much of a worry about replacing it. Um, yeah. But then again, it also gets into what your budget is. If all you can afford is cheaper rubber, that's going to be what you can afford. So you're going to probably yeah. spend more time taking care of it than you would something more expensive. And the same is true with leather. I mean, if you buy cheap leather, it may not last as long as something that is thicker, different brand, treated differently. And mm -hmm. again, your investment goes up as you go up with that. Your amount of cleaning required could vary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I especially mean, if you get I... into like uniform, uh, like uh, uh, blue collar type uniforms, that mm -hmm. can vary greatly depending on what you want. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, like, you like... Can... go ahead. No, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm talking from the, um, I'm thinking of the, like the uniform side of things, the, you know, you can potentially get something used and durable that was not as expensive, but it'll probably need a little bit more maintenance care, you know? Well, the example I'll give there is like police uniform. Let's say you get a police uniform. Um, I know this is not the time for <laughs> getting one, but I, yeah. Um, if you get the cheap ones, they're probably wool, which is fine in winter, but when it's 95 degrees outside, you're going to hate yourself. <laughs> but they're 20 bucks. That's cheap and easy to come by. Um, if you start going into the, like Nomex, which is a the fabric they use, which is breathable, and you're now looking in the 60 plus dollar range for a pair of pants. Um, mm -hmm. And they're actually more fragile. You, you can tear those a lot easier um, in certain ways. <laughs> mm. So it, it gets more difficult as you get fancier but it depends on what you're going for as well oh yeah mm. there's Excuse a million me. options <laughs> yeah and it's hard to know uh it, it is kind of one of those if you have an interest in a particular type of uniform find other people that are into that because odds are you're running to people that have different types of interests in that so mm. football gear is a good example. There are some folks who just want to get into it, and so they buy the football pants that have the pads built in because those are cheap. And then you have people like me who like a particular look, so I'll spend the extra money to get the 1980s-looking type of uh, pads, which are these mm. super bulky... Mm. Okay. Can't hear you, Gary. Mates. Sorry. Uh, I pulled the Damon. So <laughs> one of the one of the things I liked in your notes that you had actually written was in regards to like obtaining gear. Um, if it's something that you want, that's part of the aesthetic you're going for. Like you've researched it, you've you know you've got your heart kind of set on it. Um, what I like you said is that you'll probably want something that will last and can be repaired. Like, so to me, it's kind of like the middle ground. Like, you may not go for the, like, high end, especially, like, in terms of, like, price, but also not, like, the super cheap thing that's, you know, going to only last X amount of time um, and then get destroyed or, or whatever in that case. Yeah, and it depends on the uniform, too. Like, you're, you're never going to be able to repair a singlet. It's yeah. If it gets ripped, you're pretty much screwed. Um, if you get a... Uh, uh, a uh, wetsuit, for example, you can probably repair it depending on where it's damaged. Um, if you get uh, a baseball uniform, oh darn, it has a rip in it. That's kind of the point. Um, yeah, because if you slide into base, you're going to have scuffs on it. If you're uh, playing football, it's going to get damaged. So a lot of times those looks are authentic. Uh, and so there's a desire to have that look. I guess... <laughs> what you don't like the idea of having like grass stains on your uniform i was presuming i would have the grass stains on me but um so 
I think this is the uh, <laughs> attempt to the, get him to, to shoot yeah, out his nose. The uniform would be over there, and I would be over here where the grass things would end up happening. It's on knees, probably, oh. maybe on hands. Yeah, I, I really like... that if you have a uniform and you get it, make sure it has knee pads. Um, <laughs> that right there. Yeah. 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 Or you gonna say, Gary, sorry. No, I was just. What I was gonna say is, so um, this goes to my like OCD anal retentive like personality because I'm like, but I would want the uniform to be pristine. Like, I want it to. I would want it to be impeccable. Like that's that to me is the ooh ah factor. Like you know that it's like it looks fresh, mm -hmm. brand new is is my thing. And maybe I have been brainwashed too much by Tide detergent commercials or some bullshit. <laughs> you know, take the stains out and the blood and the mud and the whatever, you know, and so therefore, you know. Look, it may be machine washable, but it has to be in cold with light colors. <laughs> well, but that brings up a valid point. And, and, no, and no machine drying, you have to hang it up? Uh, depends on the uniform. <laughs> yeah, with... Yeah. But what I was going to say is, low, if you, maybe, I don't know. Read the, if Gary likes his read the laundry text. Pristine. <laughs> if Gary likes the uniform pristine, you're, for example, like on a baseball uniform, you're probably going to go for a white uniform because you can throw it in the wash, throw a bunch of bleach in it. It'll be fine. Um, if you, yeah. Because yeah. you'll get all that's those grass ho stains. That's why, hotel, that's why hotel towels are white. No, no, no. But they are all white. Sports uniforms are not all white. They are color accented. Some of them. You can get all white pants and you have a different jersey. Okay. It depends on what you're trying to go for. If you're going for a specific team uniform, yeah, they're probably going to have stripes on the sides. Right. Yeah. Uh, as a minimum. That's uh, what I color. Yeah. I would love yeah. But if you're going have... for just a baseball uniform, I would get a red jersey. A full... Uh, Minnesota Twins baseball uniform. Yeah. And then you have, like, for example, for me, if for baseball uniforms, I really like pinstripe. Mm -hmm. Which, that's the worst of mm -hmm. both worlds. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, then you but I don't... Try to go with color safe bleach, I imagine. Oh. You probably could, but I also don't mind stains on it. That's, for me, kind of the, the joy of it. What kind it's of stains, Tina. Tony? Uh... I plead the fifth. <laughs> okay. Depends on the uniform. <laughs> what do you mean depends on the uniform? I'm thinking there are some states that are on all the uniforms. That's that's how I think of that. Now, I usually do clean the uniforms. They, they don't tend to uh, stay unwashed. The jock straps, on the other hand, that's a totally different story. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. So, uh, in terms of building the inventory, one of the notes that you had that I thought was really interesting is about timing. Like, there's definitely seasonality. Um, there's geography. Like, I appreciate that you were like, you had said earlier, you know, in the episode about like, if you want, you know, wrestling stuff, it's huge in, in the state of Iowa, but maybe not yeah. somewhere else. Um, but then again, you know, it is really kind of specific to not only seasonality, but like, you know, what, what is popular there. So like, in your notes, you said, Minnesota, you can get hockey gear probably, you know, year round. Yep. Yeah. And, and likewise, if you're down in Dallas, you're probably going to get football gear. Mm -hmm. That'll be no issue, but you're probably not going to get a lot I'm, of hockey. Right. Yeah. Like I'm in Louisville. So Although they basketball is like the big so. thing. So, yeah. And you could probably get baseball there. I'm guessing. Yep. Rangers. Yeah. If you're talking about Dallas, that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and um, it, as far as the time of year, uh, it, this year is going to be the exception <laughs> uh, because there pretty, yeah. pretty much isn't any sports at the moment. So uh, everything's been thrown off. But uh, usually if you're buying online, you'll, uh, whether it's from a store, uh, like a, the company that manufactures it, or whether you're going to like eBay, You'll you'll want to look after the season's over, 
because they're usually clearancing everything out. Mm. So, like, For if you go to the manufacturer, design. sorry. For next year's designs and such. Yeah, uh, and so like uh, like wrestling singlets are a good example of their their season usually completely ends in March, um, but as far as like general, if, if they didn't make the championship leagues, they're done by February. So come beginning of April, you can usually start finding sales on them. And uh, one of the sites that I usually list uh, has what they call grab bags, where it's random, whatever that you mm -hmm. get, but it's $10 for a singlet in your size. Yeah. So yep. it's you're not going to necessarily get specifically what you want, but you'll get something you may want. And so like for me, I picked up, I, I think I sent them like four or five I sent them for like 40, 50 bucks and ended up with four or five, all of the same style. <laughs> they were all white singlets, <laughs> but in my size. Oh. So. Oh. Not something I normally would have been able to get. See, that would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. No, sorry, I'm, I'm like in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, like, and because you can just, you know, like you said, build on what you have, what you want, yeah. you know. You can. And it depends oh, on what, really your, like this. what your desire is, too. So if you didn't care about what type of singlet you got, you just wanted a singlet for, like, mm -hmm. let's say, the puppy play. If you didn't have a particular color you wanted, you just wanted to have something that was yeah, open and loose that you could move around in. That would be a perfect idea. Uh, right. If you were going for something specific, like you want tie-dyed uh, wrestling singlet, well, you're now go going to go for something more expensive because you're not going to find it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you get into football pants... Uh, again, this sounds weird, but area will determine the type of pants you will get. So if you're looking at like college teams, uh, Texas is notorious for having thin college pants. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, if you ever watch Texas football, uh, their pants are pretty much see-through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of VPL, uh, <laughs> um, and so you pretty much can see right through it now there are other other groups that do the same thing uh i know michigan's are like fairly thin but they're yellow uh it, it depends mm -hmm. on where you're at so if you're looking for a particular style like you want something that's see-through you now are focusing on a particular team mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah you, you have this look like you're confused no no oh i'm not confused um <laughs> I was busy recalling about a series of pictures I saw online of uh, full ends. Sure, we'll call them that. Um, in football, who were bent over with white, like, you know, sport uniform pants on. And I was like, that boy has rosy skin and he is wearing a white jock strap. I can yep. see <laughs> all of that right now. And like, I was like, is that legal? Like, because <laughs> I am not complaining, but if I was a mother with a small child in the stands, I might be, you know, concerned. Now, here, here's the part you're going to laugh at. Was it an orange jersey or a blue jersey? Oh, honey, I the color of the jersey was not important. I don't even remember. <laughs> I was like, I am pretty sure that man is a ginger. Uh, he is big and he has he is really stretch of the fabric to its limits was kind of the way I felt about it in that moment. But I was very appreciative. Oh, yeah. So and, I, and what I was wondering and thinking is, well, I wonder if that was from Texas. But yeah, Texas will be the orange one. Mm -mm. The, the Texas Longhorns. They're, they're, they're notorious for orange and white. Hook horns. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and uh, their uniforms are super thin. Uh, the, the kind where you you really hope it's raining that day. <laughs> <laughs> I and I live in this town. Just and saying. and and am I correct? <laughs> it, it, it's more like saying saying I should probably go to these games. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say if nothing else. Just uh, there's been a lot of uh, repeats on TV lately, so I would say if you're curious turn on TV, look at one of the sports channels. Look, uh, if you I have a TV service. For work. 
Oh, well. I ended up having to, to renew Netflix so I can watch Miraculous because I've already been watching it all the time on Disney Channel. <laughs> Not because no. of choice, but because I was required to. <laughs> mm. it, it, it all depends. And, like, if you're going to baseball again, uh, different uniforms for different teams will be different materials. So there are some teams that have very thin materials, some that are thicker, some that are pinstripes, some that are not. Mm -mm. It kind of varies on what you're looking for. Yeah. One of the things you also brought up I thought was interesting was about the ability to buy gear. Um, financing is a piece of it. Like, I mean, we've, we've you know, kind of talked about it before, but you bring up some excellent points about, like, specifically what you're getting and the authenticity factor can really, you know, hit the wallet, so to speak. Yeah, especially if you're getting uh, a particular team. So, like, if you want a helmet from a particular yeah. team, you're going to be spending hundreds of dollars on that helmet. Um, now, a new yeah. helmet is not cheap anyway. Um, I have an oddball head size, so I can't get used helmets. I've only ever found one that fit me. And you're still looking at hundreds of dollars for a helmet. Um, I wish it was smaller because I can go to eBay and find lots of helmets for 20 30 bucks they're never going to fit me. <laughs> mm. So uh, I can buy them till I run out of money and I'll never find one that fits me that way. Other like people Cinderella are lucky and slipper. they can. So like can. Cinderella, like Cinderella slipper. You're never. Yeah. <laughs> well, and for the reference, I have, I have over a size eight head. So uh, oh, and yeah. Okay, hats at about seven and seven quarters or seven and seven eighths mm. rather. So it's hard to find them. And uh, my last helmet, uh, well, sorry, two times ago, I bought a black helmet, brand new. It was $400. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I picked up one on eBay. It was a white helmet. Actually, I have sitting across from me here. Uh, and uh, surprisingly enough, I bought it from England. And mm. with shipping to send it to the U.S. was 150 bucks. Huh. I can't explain that one because that's weird. But sometimes... Likewise, you get weird, oddball things that you stumble yeah. into. Um, well, if you the get Rams... a football helmet from from England, it's probably yeah. not the type of football helmet that you're not normally going to think. No, actually, it was. <laughs> it was American football. Yeah, they don't wear they don't wear helmets. And <laughs> I'm just making another play. jab at the fact that different football British <laughs> still refer to <laughs> or have are no longer referring to association football as soccer. So they always call it football. Anyway, technically, uh, the entire it. world calls it football except for us. Hey, yeah. we took the slang from 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 the Brits, <laughs> and we just kept using it, and they dumped it on us. That's... Could we put a timestamp on this episode so people can just skip over this? Because I'm pretty sure they've already heard it <laughs> several times before. Moving on, out of this episode. I, I mean, out of this podcast. So, um. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a big deal about, you know, recognizing what you're going for. There's nothing wrong with building a collection, like oh, no. mm -hmm. legitimately piece by piece going through things and doing stuff. I mean, and this is not the same, but to me, it, it makes me think about cosplay. Like yeah, you're yeah. building a, apparel, you're building, you know, an entire look of something. So therefore, you do not have to have it all at once. Yeah. And mm -hmm. another thing to keep in mind with sports gear, for example, is... Um, like let's say you find a baseball uniform that you like. You can take it to a sports gear shop, usually the mom and pop ones, and they can put lettering on it for you. You can mm -hmm. have whatever number you want added. You can have a name put on it. You can have go online and buy patches for your favorite team, and they'll throw it on there. Um, mm -hmm. You can, like from the NFL, you can actually buy a team jersey from them with your name on it. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you're talking price there but you can do yeah, it but um, it's possible yeah and then likewise you'll stumble into stuff like uh uh here in town we have the rams past tense uh and uh one of the favorite players here i followed all the time i picked up an actual authentic jersey from him for 20 bucks mm. that, that's insane uh, yeah yeah and um there are Source like there's places to get things like um because because it, it, looking around my house 
um, Jim uses a lot of auction sites. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes, you know, those are from estates from people who have passed away and they may have weird random collections of things that they have, you know, bought over the years. Um, and you can, it, it's, it's not out of the limit to maybe find, if you're looking for gear, uh, of sorts, you might be able to find things now, depend, you don't know how, what the condition is sometimes, but you can find, you know, items. Um, he actually, I think, um, gosh, what did he find? Oh, he found like leather boots, like just random. Pair. He, we didn't end up winning the auction, but like just random pairs of leather boots that might fit you. You're thinking, oh, well, shit, like it. it and all you need for those is to maybe go to uh, a boot black to see if they what can be done to condition and repair them if necessary. Yeah, and also something else to keep in mind with uniforms is. Uh, let's say you're here in the U.S. and you want rugby uniforms. You're probably not going to have much of a selection local. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at buying stuff overseas. Uh, mm-hmm. and for that, you're looking at probably the U.K. and Australia will be your two mm-hmm. big rugby groups. Rugby. Um, yeah, if you're looking for football, a.k.a. soccer, uh, you're probably looking mostly overseas. There is some stuff here, but it's not going to be the same as... Uh, what you're getting over in Europe, for example. Although, mm-hmm. although MLS, Major League Soccer, which is here in yeah. the States, is becoming more popular. So that might change. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. the MLS is, or uh, MSL, sorry, uh, whatever. <laughs> Keep forgetting which one it is. Um, no, it's, it's MLS. It's Major League MLS, Soccer. MLS, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, their uniforms the sports are different. Watch. Yeah, but their uniforms are different. Uh, here in the U.S., we tend to have very loose uniforms. We tend to shy away from things that would have VPL being pronounced. <laughs> Whereas if you're over in Europe, you're probably literally wearing a jockstrap underneath the, the shorts. And, I mean, you've seen pictures online of people uh, literally walking over to the sidelines and taking a piss because that's considered okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's a- mm-hmm. I'll send you Fox- pictures. Fox has a a station, I think it's called Fox Soccer Plus or something like that. You can see what these uniforms that he's referring to are. Because they have uh, uh, Bona Liga and La Liga and uh, uh, different, and even Australian rules football and rugby and and, uh, uh, European soccer. And even American soccer. You can get American soccer in Canada. It's the Canadian Football League, um, but they have their own style of uniform that's different than here. Right. Um, they tend to have lots of patches and but uh, if you sponsors. But like the type of, of uniforms. <laughs> Subscribe to this channel, which, by the way, is an add-on to YouTube TV. <laughs> plug. Right. Unintentional plug. <laughs> So, Tony, let's talk about, depending on the type of gear, where you would locate it. Like, um, as an I, example, let's go with work style uniforms to start. Um, so if you're, if you, some people want used, some people want new. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. Some people absolutely don't like the idea that somebody else has ever worn the uniform. So they don't want to get something used. If you're looking at new, there are actual stores that sell work uniforms. Um, mm-hmm. uh, if you're talking uh, ooh, um, police uniforms, for example, there are stores that solely focus on police uniforms. And you can mm-hmm. literally, if you're near them, you can walk into them. Um, I've done that before here in town, is we have a local shop where I went and got my uniform, and they even tailored it to the size I needed. <laughs> Um, wow. Well, and but keep in mind when I went in, I told them I was getting a security uniform because I was starting a new job. I didn't uh, say I'm getting a police uniform. Uh, yeah, and also, so the big like we talked about, I think one of our earlier episodes, like if you're looking for like more authentic like police uniform, you don't want to use the uniform of the city or township yeah. or whatever that you're from. Yeah. So. 
you definitely want to go for different colors. Now, if you get something that is the same, don't wear it in town. <laughs> also bad. Very bad. Like if you... uh, Very um, true. <laughs> but if but you could, like, for example, I had a St. Louis uniform that I would intended to wear out of town. Uh, unfortunately, I, I outgrew it before I had a chance to. So, <laughs> yeah. That's, so also a reminder, folks, that I think you mentioned it, that like you will. Sometimes you may outgrow or undergrow, like you may get, you know, you, it's a possibility you might get too small for things. You never know. Yeah. Um, and just, you know. I think for like, if you really appreciate, like to me, like I tend to hold on to gear, even if it's, if it's maybe a little too small or, or maybe too big, but usually too small now. <laughs> but, and the main reason I do it is because I could potentially donate or give it to someone else or, you know, depending on the scene, they, I might want to have someone wearing like I like wrestling singlet as an example, perfect example, like the opposite team, like we're fighting, you know, or, you know, battling for the sake of who's on top, whatever kind of thing, you know, just <laughs> as a part of the scene kind of thing. And, and likewise, when I was mentioning earlier of uh, if you're getting into a uniform, find other people that have it because they may have spares. So you mm -hmm. may not have to pay a dime and get a uniform. So, mm -hmm. like, for example, I, I mentioned in previous episode that uh, a lot of times I'll find sales online where it's three bucks for a pair of Under Armour pants. I'll buy three pair, even if I'm only going to use one, because the others are here that I can give away as I need, because I don't care about three bucks. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not going to give away a pair of 60 bucks ones. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but... Th three bucks and eh, who cares that that's yeah. or they become yeah. the, the kind that get destroyed <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if you're looking at singlets you're probably not going to destroy most of those but if you bought the ten dollar grab bag one you might not care yeah and likewise uh if you find uh i mentioned goodwill before that's another example of uh the number of times i've gone to a goodwill and found baseball uniform that isn't quite my size but it's a dollar for the pair of pants Okay, I'll just yeah. pick it up because I know I can give it to someone. Yeah, they're, they're cheap. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I list Goodwill as, uh, or those type of stores as an example of you can get you can stumble on surprises. Um, right, but I a dollar that that was the thing. Oh no, I yeah <laughs> a dollar. Um, there have been times that I've picked up. Uh, now you're not going to find wrestling singlets usually at a, a Goodwill, <laughs> um, but you can find. Uh, soccer shorts you can find baseball jerseys baseball pants uh you can usually find soccer shorts soccer jerseys uh that sort of thing and most of the time yeah it's like three bucks for the shirt and pants and usually once a week they do half off so you can get it for mm -hmm. a buck and that's one of those things of if it might have a rip on it that's maybe why it's there so if you want to fix it, cool. Um, obviously, if it's there, it's probably been worn. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, a lot of times there'll be a button broken on it. So yes, you'll have yeah. to do a little bit of a repair. But again, mm -hmm. it's a dollar. Oh, darn. Um, and especially if it's something that you plan on destroying anyway. Hey, you're already halfway there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, if you don't care in particular about the type of uniform, you, you're just getting something, check out those places because there's lots of options. Um, eBay is another one. If you're very specific on what you want, you're going to have a harder time finding something. But if you're open for whatever, go look online. I've seen uh, baseball pants under five bucks there. And mm -hmm. these days, they a lot of places aren't doing free shipping. So then it becomes more expensive. But it depends on your luck you draw. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a variety of locations you can look for things. It's just about, like, the pursuit, I think, more than anything. Yeah. Like, being aware of what it is that you want. Um, definitely, I, um, I think it's important to recognize that, like, secondhand, thirdhand... Uh, use of items can be really big. Like I was just talking to my friend who was here this weekend about the fact that like 
I grew up with parents who didn't really buy things brand new. Like we did every once in a while, but this is before we got to the stage where we are, where everything has a, you know, intentional short lifespan. Um, so it's like, you know, when you bought something brand new, it was like a, it was a big investment, like a television or an appliance or something. But even so, like today, it's like, I tend to buy a lot of things refurbished, you know, which mm -hmm. more often than not is there's nothing wrong with the item. And a lot of times it was purchased brand new, but returned. So mm -hmm. hence you get the discount. Thank you very much. Um, so, you know, it's like, you know, you buy a carpet scrubber, you buy it for half of what it normally runs for. Um, so I don't know how much that happens in terms of apparel with gear. Um, but I know like you could, because you have in the list, like I thought that was really good about like garage sales, you know, swap meets, yard sales, charity, you know, events, those kind of things, you know, that people donate or, or whatever. Yeah. Well, and it, it also depends on what your goal is. So if you're buying a particular player's uniform, you're probably buying because you like the player. <laughs> So that may have a its own sexual interest for you of <laughs> I'm wearing the pants that he wore. Uh, for example, um, uh, I have a couple of jerseys that are like that, where I'm wearing the jersey that this player I followed wore on this game, and I absolutely love it. And it isn't something that I'm going to ha let get destroyed. <laughs> uh, yeah. But at the same time, if you're uh, like when I was in college, for example, my college, uh, one of the four years I was there decided to have a, a sale and they sold off all their excess sports gear. So I went in and I think I spent 50 cents on a pair of baseball pants. I think I spent a quarter on uh, uh, soccer shorts and I actually mm. still have them, even though I don't even remotely fit into them. But I've held on to them for the years because that actually has a meaning for me. That was my college. Mm -hmm. even though i have zero fetish interest in it it, it has a ah, different meaning it's a collector thing yeah right i mean it, it's it's a memory of my past and uh at the same time i kick myself because they were selling singlets for a buck 50 and <laughs> i was i was still in the closet and didn't want to be caught buying a singlet because you know that's too gay um <laughs> So I didn't buy one, which I now kick myself. Oh, but, for not oh, buying well. one? Yeah. Oh. Boo. It happens. Oh, well. Yep. You'll learn. It happens. And then likewise, if you're going for uh, more uh, blue-collar type jobs, you, you may not want something that's used because it may have, like, the crotch worn out where it's going to mm -hmm. split in two weeks after you wear it. Mm -hmm. Uh you may, it might have stains, you might have discolorations, it might have been previously patched. That's all going to be a factor for what you want. Um, usually, obviously, if it's been damaged, it's cheaper. You're going to pay more otherwise. But likewise, if it's already been damaged, you're probably not as worried about throwing it in the washer. And if it goes in the wrong cycle, oh darn. Yeah. Um, as far right. as where you buy it, you can get them from garage sales, you can get them from the local shops. Uh, it's harder to find specific things if you do that, though. Yeah. It's going to be a, a lot of searching, like yep. hunting and packing and what have you. You're going to have, you know. So, and I, I guess that's actually a thing to kind of say overall. Depending on what you're looking for in regards to gear, you're going to have to have a little bit of patience. Yeah. Um, and, and you'll probably upgrade. You'll probably start with... I don't need a specific person's uniform. I'm going to get just this generic looking one. And then you're mm -hmm. going to find a team that you really like. So you're going to start focusing on getting their stuff. And then mm -hmm. eventually you'll find a player that you like and you're going to get that. Uh, so it, it changes over time. And invariably, you'll if you're a pack rat like me, you end up saving all of them because eventually you <laughs> give them away or destroy them. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of the other things, um, before we get to wrapping up, I thought, Tony, that you had said, which is really, really, really important, is to set a budget. Because um, otherwise, you could take out a mortgage. Um, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> well, especially like, for example, if you, well, we'll go back to the college team. If you want a Texas Longhorn particular players year, uh, you can go on eBay and, and buy particular players jerseys, but you're probably looking at five to six hundred dollars for a jersey. Oh God. And that's if you're lucky. It might be higher depending on if they were a well known player that moved into the major leagues. Mm. Um, so it can get very expensive if you get very specific. Uh, if you're wanting a particular style of uniform, like it has to be Under Armour from head to toe, you're going to spend more for that than you would if it's bike from head to toe. Mm -hmm. right. It will. Yeah. It, in, another one is, is uh, like the pinstripes. I like pinstripes. They're rare. You almost never find used pinstripes because most teams don't use them. So the amount of them out there is far less. And especially when you start getting into larger sizes, they're more difficult to find, therefore less demand, or less supply rather, more demand, so the prices get higher. Mm -hmm. So are you saying like that there's a high demand for pinstripes and that's why they're not as available? Or you can, uh, can not find them as easily? In like a big size, yeah. Okay. So I'm not saying that there's a high demand, but there's higher than average. Um, you can look at it as the same thing as like if you go to buy a nasty pig jock, they may have five three XLs, they've got fifty two XLs, a hundred XLs. If you are lucky and get those that five to start smalls. with, you're great. Yeah. <laughs> and if you get one of those extra large or three XL ones, you're lucky, but there's not much of a supply. So as soon as those are out, you're going to be spending more than everybody else does. Right. Uh, and uh, a good example yeah. on that specific front uh, is uh, Mesculo. They're one of the fetish yep. gear manufacturers. Uh, if you buy them through like one of the stereotypical vendors here in the U.S., like Mr. S., uh, they go up to a 3XL. If you go to their website, they actually go all the way up to a 5XL, if not a 6XL. And But you're pen spending more because you're ordering it from them and having it shipped from Russia. But you can get it. And so it, there are options out there. It's just more difficult, um, especially when you get into a full uniform because you're probably having to deal... Uh, like a wrestling singlet, for example, you're not going to walk into a sports gear store and find a, a 4XL. They just don't exist. So you're going to have to go online to their website, buy it direct. Uh, you mm. can find them used if you're lucky. But if you're lucky enough to need an XL, there's far more supply of them available online. Yeah. Right. So who they cater to. Well, it's not only who they cater to, but just the the... I mean, they're they're in wrestling, for example. The only players that are going to wear a four XL are the heavyweights. None of the other players will need anything that big, so they just don't make enough of them because mm -hmm. they're just not the demand. Uh, mm. But if you get an XL, XL could be all the different sizes depending on the player. So there's a much more likelihood of that. Uh, likewise, you're probably if you ever look at, in particular, like singlets, there are three. XS singlets out there. Yeah. Which is a crazy thought to me, but if you are looking at like the 115 pound player, they very well might have a, a 3XS. Uh, I couldn't fit that on my leg, but <laughs> each person is their own thing. All right. It'd, be, it'd look great it's on a funny. teddy bear. Yeah. It was so funny because funny. I was looking at that earlier today, or just now, um, just because I was like, "Oh, I was." So I was looking at the site and I saw the three XS and I didn't think anything of it until like, wait, what does that mean? Oh, mm -mm. yeah, and Removed that's from cart. Yeah, I've done that too. I uh, had a team that I was <laughs> particularly wanting a uh, uniform from. Didn't pay attention that it was a three XS, not a three XL, and. Uh, oh. It arrived, and I was originally had to go back online and go, was C youth size 3XL? <laughs> <laughs> so, kids, remember, 
Don't just judge it by the X's. Look at the letter after it. Yeah. Right. And likewise, the by the way, if you're doing thing. a search online and you look for 2XL, always search for XXL as well as 2XL. But if you're mm -hmm. looking for three or four, don't put in XXXL because that's almost never going to be listed. Uh, XXX point. is getting filtered. Because it's XXX. Sites. Yep. Oh. So we usually do three XL just to get around to that. Right. And likewise, X, four, five, etc. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one of the other things, uh, as we're wrapping up here, you had said that I thought was good was um, one benefit of a full uniform, meaning like having all the pieces and parts, basically, I'm guessing, um, including yes. the protective gear, is that there's uh, an increased aspect to the severity of like play if you're doing a scene with the with the gear on. Yeah, well, and. It, it isn't just for like football. Um, if you're in getting a, a leather uniform, it very much could be the same way. Depends on what you're going for. Um, if you, uh, so at Claw, uh, uh, Chess and I did a scene where we were showing off uh, impact play, heavy impact play. And the example mm -hmm. was I had my full football uniform on. And most people didn't really think anything of it until he literally punched me in the chest and I fell to the floor. Uh, scared the crap out of the people in the front row let me just say uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it did okay like let's just pause for a second and break this down yes because the impact of hitting you in and of itself could be significant for people yes. even though it was focused on impact play on top of it the fact that the physical force was enough to make you fall is another factor and Tony, I love you dearly, but your body making impact with the floor in and of itself also is another thing for people to reconcile <laughs> with. So I can imagine all three of those combined together probably, you know, it, yeah, it definitely makes people pay attention. And Tony mm -hmm. just smiles about <laughs> <laughs> I actually laughed at the time because <laughs> it caught me off guard. I think that was the intention. Uh, we, his intention was, yes, to catch me off guard, but it, I don't think people were expecting me to be getting up giggling. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's not usually what you have happen. But What's no, uh, it, I, I, I might be okay with that. I might have been yeah. like, oh. <laughs> but like, Do if it you again. Have, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you have catcher's gear, for example, you can basically land on your knees without worrying about, am I going to shatter them? Mm. If you have mm. football pads on, you have knee pads on, you're probably not going to hurt your knees if you go down on them suddenly. Um, or shoulder pads, you're going to be able to fall on them. If you have a helmet on, you can hit the concrete and not be as concerned. Uh, mm -hmm. You still want to keep some mindfulness. Uh, <laughs> no, no, right. no jumping off a second story window. Uh, <laughs> so, but, so uh, quick question. Because uh, yeah. uh, you mentioned catchers of gear. Yes. And I noticed last season, because, you know, not this season doesn't exist. Last season, uh, when I was watching more baseball for reasons, the catcher's vest looked very different than they used to in the past. Yes. They, do, they've, do you have uh, a part? Personally, do you have a preference between those two? Like the big bulky ones versus the more like streamlined, looks like it's Kevlar or something ones? Um, it's a, this is where it gets really complicated because it depends on the player for me. Uh, in other words, how it fits them. Um, now, I can't find one that fits me well enough that I like it at all. So mm. I, I have a couple of them. Um, if you, one thing you'll notice also, uh, similar to that, is if you're getting uniforms, it will vary based on the type of build you have. So, for example, if you're extremely skinny and small, you're probably not going to find a lot of catcher's gear. You'll find some, but you probably won't find as much as you'd like because 
usually if you're smaller and shorter, you're not going to be a catcher. Mm-hmm. You'll be a shortstop or you'll be outfield or you'll be one of those. Yeah. And honestly, no, seriously, the next time you watch a I, baseball game. I know, Tony, but I was too busy focusing on catcher as in bottom and you were like, well, <laughs> if you're going to be small, you're probably not going to be. And I was like, oh, pray tell. That, like, I don't disagree. However, fantasy f- stats and facts say the smaller you are, the more likely you are to receive. But anyway, go ahead. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, likewise, if you get into uh, like hockey gear, uh, you're not going to find, uh, even though I'm large, I can't find hockey gear that fits me. Um, I can get a goalie jersey that fits, but they don't make things that fit me in the pants mm. or that sort of thing. The, so the it's non-goalie players uniforms. Yeah, well, even the goalies they they only go up usually to their equivalent of a two XL. No, oh. mm-hmm. they usually don't even go higher than that. And the jerseys are the the goalie jerseys the, are the exception because there are. Uh, shoulder pads, I guess, for lack of a better comparison, but it's basically shoulder pads that they wear. I suppose uh, as a goalie, you would still have to be very flexible, but that's debatable on that too. Oh yeah, well, but there aren't that many that are big because you're you're moving around. You're you're <laughs> there aren't a lot of really really big players <laughs> on any of the sports. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's hard but, to find. Yeah, like. It's just hard to, it's like, that's just the reality of like some of the sports stuff. Like you're not, it's going to be a lot harder to find if you're a larger person. It, it It's not impossible, but it is going to be harder. Yeah. And likewise, that's where your expectations come in. If, if you uh, are a larger guy, don't expect that you're going to find everything in your size. If you're a smaller guy, don't expect that you're going to find goalie gear that's going to fit you. Uh, it varies based on the sport, based on how you fit into the players. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you get into, I mean, the next time you see a, a baseball game, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this right now, watch the baseball game. Uh, look at the stockiness of the player. The stockiest players are catchers. The second stockiest are usually first baseman. Next up is third base. And that's because of the type of plays they do. They usually block. A catcher mm-hmm. blocks home plate. A catcher is throwing far distances. First base is blocking. Third base is blocking. And have you seen Tony getting... Puckett in his prime? There, there are exceptions. Mm. He was a right fielder, <laughs> but I mean, I think. Look, look at like Mark McGuire. He was a first baseman. Mm. So it was kind of Herbeck. Can you tell I'm a Minnesota Twins fan? <laughs> or St. Louis here. Uh, <laughs> So it, it depends on what you're going for. You're, you're going to have a difficult time finding sizes if it doesn't match what you're looking for. <laughs> and Sorry. especially if you go overseas. Gary Knight. Oh, yeah. That's if, true. If you buy a rugby uniform, do not buy your size in U.S. sizes. It's not the same thing. Uh, a 2XL U.S. Sure. short size is not going to match a 2XL. And you'll find that yeah. out the minute you go to put it on. Yeah, and like you mentioned, I could, well, you didn't mention it, but it's in the notes. You mentioned places like Wish, um, which is notorious for like, like just, like Jeez, not just, shop. not only just cheap quality. Well, don't don't just say don't shop there because sometimes, honestly, you'll be surprised. I have a pair of boots that I got from Wish that I wear consistently. They're easier to get on. They 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 will, <laughs> they will never. Um, get dirty dirty because there's a there's a coating on them unfortunately so they can't get they can't get like boot black really i'd have to just like you just have to like kind of wash them down but you can't um but they're they're quick and easy for me and they're they're easy to put on and i love them and i'm happy i got them but most what i was going to say was a lot of the stuff there is going to be cheaply made it is going to be and it is going to be two to three to four sizes smaller than you expect it. So a, even if it says, oh, it's 5X, like that might be a two, uh, maybe a three X, depending on um, what you're getting. Yeah. And, and, and quality not is even, not good. Yeah, yeah. And well, not even 
uh, just Wish. I mean, Wish is great if you're getting just want to get something, mm-hmm. uh, and you're you're trying to keep it on a cheaper budget. That's great. Yeah. Uh, if you go to Amazon, for example, and let's say you want to go to Amazon and buy a speedo, half the speedos are not in U.S. sizes. Mm-hmm. So you can find a three XL speedo that is under an XL in U.S. sizes. So you have to be very yeah. careful and watch your sizing. Uh, yeah. Amazon won't take back a Speedo that doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you speaking from experience? No, I just, I'm, I, I really hope not, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and, and like, you know, Chuck had said in the live chat, one of the things to know about, like, you know, it, wish is, wish is wish. I don't know how else to phrase it. Like, yeah. there can be some really good deals on there, but the just keep this in mind the price tends to reflect the quality so yeah. in addition wish is not a platform in my experience and i agree with what chuck's bringing up if you have a timeliness to your need that is not the platform to be going through like also true it's june children if you're looking for holiday gifts sure like Shop to your heart's content right now. But mm-hmm. if you need something for pride, no, no, yeah. no, honey. Like that now is now now is not I'm, the time. I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I literally bought something in May, and the estimated delivery time was somewhere between like May and July. Like just just like, and that was the estimated delivery time that they gave me when I purchased it. So right, yeah. And likewise, another thing to watch out for is uh, authenticity. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're buying Under Armour on Wish, it might be. I wouldn't consider. And yeah, sorry, I, I have so I have but, so many thoughts about that. <laughs> well, just speaking from the tech side of things, uh, I've the number of people that it sell uh, falsified or faked tech items on oh, yeah. Wish is insane. Where they'll take an old video card that's eight years old, overwrite the the header on it so that it says that it's this card and then they'll sell it. The The store vanishes before anybody can catch them, but they got rid of it. So it doesn't hurt them mm. at all. And they got the money for it. Mm. Yep. Funny how that happens. And huh. technically you have a product that is what it says it is. You're never going to get it repaired or warrantied or anything else. Good luck. Technically. Right. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, Wish, Amazon, eBay, yeah, lots of options. Um, e- even the the Goodwill and secondhand stores are great. And then likewise, chat up people who who are around that have that interest because yeah. they may have extras. God knows they may mm-hmm. have extras. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going through my stuff. I have five tubs, uh, like fifty five gallon tubs of baseball gear. Oy. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, I yeah, I've been like there's a yeah, there's a there's a potential idea in my head because I like the idea of a baseball uniform. That's been yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and the reason yeah. why I was going through it was because uh so club I belong to, we do Inferno every year, and one of the things we do is a uh, charity uh garage sale for lack of a better word. And I was going to take them there and because a lot of the stuff that i buy for example is three xls because they fit me Mm -hmm. um, that's a size that not a lot of people can get their hands on so hey for a buck buck 50 sure that's a great buy oh yeah so i can pretty much guarantee that it's out of the house then (laughs) yeah (laughs) and the money goes to charity so it's helping somebody else (laughs) yeah Huh. That was my intent for getting through all that stuff. I just didn't realize how much of it I had. <laughs> and I'm still going, technically, so there could be more. Yeah. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Huh. One of the things I like, uh, Tony, as we get to ending, was saying, basically, and this is true for everything, um, I think it comes from a concept of not feeling pressured, and that is to say, decide for yourself what you want and enjoy what it is that you purchase like like mm-hmm. that you get like it's the whole thing behind it how you get it will vary you know there's lots of options that have been discussed in the series 
um, you know, in concept and, and idea and how you're going to obtain it for what reason, all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing is that, you know, it brings you pleasure. That's kind of the whole point. Yeah. yeah. And likewise, as much as we made fun of wish, if you're buying a puppy hood off of wish because you don't have one, that's going to be the greatest thing for you because it doesn't matter that it might not last beyond a year, Yeah. but you have it now. Yeah. It's something for you to enjoy. And so. something you might be able to to afford versus something from Mr. Well, yeah. And the other exactly. part is start out with basics. If, if you want to get into baseball, just get the cheapest baseball uniform you can get familiar with, or like if you do football gear, for example, get familiar with what you need, what fits well, what you need mm-hmm. to do better next time. And if you do that cheaply, then you can build up over time as you find what is better. And that's why a, a lot of us folks who collect gear have so much of it because we don't ever get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> For us, there's a history behind it. Right. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what, folks? That's the end. Oh. Anyways, contact us, pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, six or otherwise, at 361. See you all talk. That's 361-265-8255. Find out some various social media outlets at Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage check and notifications when the, we go live, for one example. Um, that's all at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, if you would like to know when we're planning to uh, show these and what sh- t- what show topics we may be having, like what are we doing next week? Hmm, I wonder. Uh, you can check it out at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col and subscribe there. Uh, we got plenty of merch. This is this Consensus My Four Play shirt. Uh, we've got actually... One, two, three, four different styles. Yeah, bear, mm-hmm. leather, pup, and drag. Did I say that right? Is that a good accent? I'm not sure. I did that on my <laughs> The brand new drag consent is my four play because apparently drag has a flag now. I uh, just found that out last week. What do you know? Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Get the pre and post shows, uh, uh, the, uh, video and audio um, uh, at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, and if you just want to send us some money because you like what we're doing, but uh, you can't do a subscription, you don't really want anything, go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and you can just donate right through there. Uh, you can rate us on uh, Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts, and Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet. Says box, set box, puppy box, cub box, something or other. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as uh, Theater Cub Seven Nine on most bear related sites, or Facebook, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere known as Gabriel Seventy Three. That's G A R B E A R Seven Three, and Tony. If they would like to chat more with you, particularly about your uh, great, vast knowledge about gear, as we've discussed in the series, how would they do that? Uh, easiest way is um, most of the services I'm on is Cubs is C U B E Z I Z. That's the easiest. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> sim- short, sweet, simple. Always good. Yep. And with that, uh, unlike the show, by the way. Um, and with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good night, y'all.